With Uber Reserve, you can book your Uber ride in advance, 90 days in advance. Perfect for all you forward thinkers and planning gurus. Reserve your Uber ride up to 90 days in advance. Uber Reserve. See Uber app for details. This ad is about AT&T's deal on the new iPhone 15 Pro, and it's real, guaranteed. That's not always the case with other ads. The view of a lifetime. Only with a pricey upgrade. Breathe in to find inner peace. Then pay extra to remove the ads. At AT AT&T, we mean what we say. Learn how to get iPhone 15 Pro with titanium on us with eligible trade-in. Guaranteed. Connecting changes everything. AT&T. See att.com slash iPhone for details about the guaranteed trade-in promo for new and existing customers. Available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. You're listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. If you're looking for fun and relatable content to uplift your spirits when you're scrolling endlessly online, look no further than Big Kid Problems. That was created by today's guest, Sarah Merrill Hall. Sarah grew an audience of over half a million Instagram followers by bringing humor and relatable content to our everyday struggles. So she has a mission to help her followers embrace their imperfections, laugh at the hard times, and live their best kid lives. And that's how Sarah has turned Big Kid Problems into an infectious brand. But then her adulting content took a turn when Sarah became a new mom. Enter the next era of big kid problems. A lot of you can probably relate. She calls it bottle service, a new kind of pregnancy and motherhood podcast from recounting her ultimate C-section recovery guide to being open about her failing breastfeeding journey. Bottle service by big kid problems is here to open up a new conversation about motherhood. Sarah and I covered all kinds of things, including adulting, building her brand, her journey of becoming a first time mom. And we also dived into my favorite unhealthy reality obsession. Yes, that's right. It's Scandaval, the scandal that just won't die. Scandaval. I've talked about it before, Food Heals Nation. I could not help talking about it again today with Sarah. And then stay tuned to the end of this episode because I will be answering a listener question that came in about foods that heal and help with hormones. But first, Food Heals Nation, can I tell you about the luscious latte I just made? Okay, here it is. It's a shot of espresso mixed with Trader Joe's almond coconut milk and Harmony by Organifi topped with ice. It tastes so good. It's such a good latte. And of course, it's got incredible health benefits as well. The rich and creamy chocolate taste of the Harmony is basically a result of the carefully crafted blend of cacao and adaptogens, lightly sweetened with zero sugar monk fruit that Organifi makes. It's immune boosting. It's energy boosting. It's got cool ingredients like shatavari, which promotes overall vitality because it's adaptogenic. It improves your libido. It decreases PMS and menopausal symptoms. It's got stinging nettle, which is a plant rich in vitamins and minerals like A and C and iron. It's packed with antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds. It's got chastity tree berry that encourages hormone balance, supports healthy progesterone and estrogen levels, and can even clear up hormone-related acne. Interesting, right? How all of these ingredients have all of these incredible health benefits. It's also got ginger. Ginger is a soothing herb with all of these therapeutic compounds and adaptogens. It's widely known to help with digestion and immunity support. Those ingredients and so much more make this a healthy and delicious drink. And it tastes like chocolate. Speaking of chocolate, I also just got a refill on my Organifi Chocolate Gold. So that I'm going to have tonight. Organifi Gold is the perfect bedtime latte to send you off into a restful sleep with sleepy superfoods that will work while you're sleeping. So yes, that is what I will be sipping on before 
bed tonight. Again, you know where to get it. It's all over at OrganifiShop.com slash Food Heals. Use the discount code Food Heals. You're going to save 20% off of your order. All right, next up, I'll be covering some of the most important health headlines you need to know this week, and then we'll get to my interview with Sarah. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Food Heals Nation, have you heard of Threads? It's kind of like Twitter for Instagrammers. It's by Meta, by Facebook. And uh, Elon and Zuck are having a little cute cute fight about it. Um, it's fun to watch. But it's now the fastest growing app in history. It got over 100 million users in just five days. And I personally like it so far because to me it's like Twitter but without the negativity and politics. Now, of course, that may change, but for right now, if you want to hear my unhinged Twitter-like thoughts, I'm over at Allison Melody TV. Follow me there. And um, I wanted to talk about this new book that just came out in May. It's called Fatal Conveniences, and it is by Darren Olean. And if you remember him, he was the co-host on the series with Zac Efron, Down to Earth. Did you watch that? He's also the New York Times bestselling author of Super Life. And I think it's a very important book to get on your bookshelf. I am reaching out to see if I can get an interview with him, but this is what we talk about all the time. So let me summarize the book and then I'm gonna give you the top five safety tips from the book, the things that you most need to know right now. So the book is about our day-to-day Fatal conveniences. Fatal conveniences are the toxic products that we routinely use and the unhealthy things that we do that our culture and corporations have made us believe are safe and necessary for living well and efficiently. These things from deodorant to cosmetics to dental floss to sunscreen to laundry detergent, air fresheners, carpets, crayons, candles, tea bags, cell phones, chewing gum, and more, they've just become a part of our daily life. But as you know, because you listen to this show, they are wreaking havoc on our health and on our planet because the environmental toxins that are found in these products create a cascade of problems, including chemical sensitivities, autoimmune issues, obesity, chronic health diseases, and so much more. So Darren, the author, spent most of his adult life obsessively researching these quote unquote conveniences. So in the book, he raises our awareness of their dangers, demolishes the myth that if it's easy, it must also be good. Mm, Sounds like fast food industry. That sounds like their slogan, right? So he's going to give us alternative choices to take control of our lives and our health. So here are the top five safety tips, specifically when it comes to our cell phones and the radiation that they are emitting to us all day long. We're holding them in our hands. We're putting them in our pockets. We are sleeping next to them, right? These are big, big no-nos. And cell phones have barely been around long enough for the long-term health effects to be studied, but they are showing that there are massive connections and links to cancer. And as you know, Alice and Melody at Food Heals, our number one goal in life is not to get cancer and not to let you get it either. So, Here are the top five tips. Thank you to Dr. Joel Kahn, who's been on the show um, for breaking these down for us from the Kahn Center for Cardiac Longevity. When you're not using your cell phone, put it in airplane mode because otherwise it's emitting pulsed radiation all day long, all night long, because it's always trying to connect. So put that cell phone on airplane mode when you're not on the phone, when you're not scrolling, put it away, put it out of the room and put it on airplane mode. Turn your cell phone off at night. I turn my Wi-Fi off at night, right? Now I can't control all the homes around me, all of their Wi-Fi, but I can control mine and I can control my phone. And whatever you do, do not, absolutely do not sleep with your cell phone next to your head or next to your body. Keep your phone away from your reproductive organs. Men, don't carry your phone in the front pocket of your pants. Women, don't put your phone in your bra. I will never forget my good friend who got breast cancer. She used to sleep with her cell phone basically on top of her chest. She got breast cancer. Obviously, I can't say that that was the cause, but it was in the exact same spot that she used to put her cell phone. So don't do it, ladies. The safest way 
to carry your cell phone is in a bag or in a backpack, not on you, not on your clothes, not in your pocket. Number four, I do this one all of the time. Use speakerphone when you talk on the phone. We don't want the phone up to our ears. Is that causing me brain cancer or ear cancer? I don't know yet, but I don't want to find out. We want to avoid having our phones so close to our heads all of the time. I used to have a pop phone and what it was is it was a connector phone that would plug in to my cell phone and I could talk on like an old school phone and have the cell phone actually farther away from me because it had a long cord. When they switched the plugs on the iPhone, I couldn't use it anymore because it had a different plug. Um, so if they have them today, I should probably find out, but think of ways that you can keep the phone far away from you by using another device or using the speakerphone but don't spend all day talking on the phone with the phone up to your head. And number five is to stop using your phone when the signal is weak. This causes your phone to boost its radio frequency transmission power. So that's just emitting more of that radiation. And so those are just a few simple things that you can do to protect yourself from one of those conveniences, one of those fatal conveniences, as Darren calls it in the book. All right, this next article came from CNN. Food Heals Nation, are you filtering your tap water? Because a recent study conducted by the U.S. Geological Survey revealed that nearly half of the tap water in the United States is contaminated with chemicals known as forever chemicals. They're known as forever chemicals. That does not sound good. I don't want forever chemicals in my water, certainly not in my body. They're called PFAs and they do pose significant risks to human health. Now, why is this news? At Food Heals Nation, we've known forever that our tap water is contaminated, but I would tell people that 10 years ago and they would not believe me. The government would make sure that our water was clean. No, no, they won't. And now they're coming out and telling us that in the news. So my guess is if they're saying it's 50%, it's probably a lot more. So let's talk about those PFAs, those forever chemicals. What are they? They're a family of synthetic chemicals that are widespread in our environment and can persist for a long time, both in the environment and our bodies. Forever chemicals, they're the ones that have those long half lights lives that are very, very hard to detox out. People are like, Ali, why are you always juicing and taking all your supplements? Because I am trying to detox my body at all times. Even if I'm not on a juice cleanse, I'm upping my water intake, right? You've got to drink half your body weight in ounces of water per day, and it's a lot. Plus, on top of that, I'm doing my juicing, I'm doing my powders. I am detoxing all of the time because exposure to those PFAs has been linked to all these health issues, cancer, obesity, thyroid disease, high cholesterol, decreased fertility, liver damage, hormone suppression, these are not coming from Alley at Food Heals. These are according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. So the study that the U.S. Geological Survey did found that approximately 45% of drinking water samples in the United States contain at least one PFA chemical. However, here's the kicker. It's important to note that the study focused on only 32 out of 12,000 types of PFA chemicals. So the actual number of people drinking contaminated water, they say could have been higher. Alley Food Heals is saying is definitely a thousand percent higher. Protect yourself, filter your water. So get your water filters, filter your water. I don't care if they're expensive or cheap. If you can't ex afford an expensive water filter, I don't care. Get the cheap one. And what you can do is find out what kind of filter do you need in your area? right? Because your area is going to be different than my area. So you can go to your local utilities website, find the most recent water report. They're free, they're published, and that will tell you what's in your water. And it'll also say what measures you can take most likely to reduce the contaminants in your area. So in LA, when I had my Kangen, Kangen, whatever you want to call it, water filtration system, I got specific filters that were for Los Angeles, right? So you can look up what's right for you. Now, for PFAs specifically, those forever chemicals, which we know there's over 12,000 and they only studied 32, and 50% of our tap water has now been found to contain 32 out of 12,000 of these chemicals. So again, we know it's a lot more. We wanna use carbon filters. 
Carbon filters are designed to remove PFAs, but at the same time, you've got to change them regularly because think of the filters can get oversaturated with those chemicals over time. So whenever it says change that water filter, please change that water filter. Don't wait, right? And the good news to come out of this report is that the EPA did propose the first national drinking water standards for six of these PFA chemicals. And if these standards are finalized, then water systems will have to take action to reduce the PFA levels to ensure the safety of our drinking water supply. Now, I think should, this should have happened a long time ago. I'm sure you do too. But in the meantime, filter your water and protect yourself. And as always, to protect yourself, you can heal yourself, you can heal your body through foods. By eating a whole foods plant-based diet, your body is going to naturally detox faster. You're constantly aiding your body in detox when you eat more plants, when you drink more juice, when you take more supplements, when you're boosting your immune system. You'll be able to handle more things like radiation and Wi-Fi and chemical exposure in your drinking water. You're going to be able to do it much better than someone who's eating the standard American diet, who's poisoning their body daily with junk food and fast food and sugar and processed food. So like I said, I'm consistently detoxing my body, but I just had friends in town for a long weekend and then um, they missed their flight. So they stayed another day. So, you know, afterwards I was like telling them, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do such a good juice detox after you guys leave. And my friend was like, well, I'll do some juice, but like, I'm not going as extreme as you because I'm too hungry. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to eat clean foods. And also throughout my day, I'm going to be drinking clean juice and clean water. And I'm going to keep my body in a state of always detoxifying. What else can you do? Sweat. You like to work out? Go work out. You like a sauna? You like a steam room? Go sweat out those toxins on a regular basis. This will change your life. We have to be aiding our body in the detox process at all times. Because of these convenience chemicals that now shape our lives, our bodies were not meant to detox the massive amount of chemicals that are coming at us every single day in the world we live in today. So the best way to protect yourself is to do your juices, do your greens, do your vegetables, get those phytochemicals, those nutrients, keeping your state, your body in a state of consistent, constant detoxification. You know I'm plant-based. You know that the scientific studies have found that the most effective diet against cancer is the plant-based diet. You know a plant-based diet helps with your longevity. It helps with your heart health, helps with your weight, lowers your risk of autoimmune conditions and other diseases and chronic health conditions. But even if you're not going to go fully plant-based, eat more plants, you will live longer. Eat more plants, you will sustain your life. Eat more plants, you will detox faster. Eat more plants, you will feel better. Food Heals Nation, I know you got this. Food Heals Nation, let's talk about lashes, specifically Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. With over 25,000 five-star reviews, this mascara is a game changer. So say goodbye to damaging glue and salon prices because Thrive's Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara mimics the look of lash extensions without the hassle. Its proprietary tubing formula wraps around each lash, giving you dramatic length and definition from root to tip. So I take the mascara and I put it on the underside and it looks really good. And then I put it on top and that's when I get this like double 3D amazing lengthening look. And the mascara lasts all day, all night, no clumping, no smudging, no flaking. And the best part, of course, is that it's actually packed with nourishing ingredients that support longer, stronger, and healthier looking lashes over time. Removing it is a breeze. You just use warm water and a washcloth. No need for soap. It's that easy. And I love that Thrive Cosmetics is all about clean, vegan, and cruelty-free beauty. They have no parabens, no sulfates, no phthalates, and it doesn't compromise with their performance. But of course, it's not just about beauty. Thrive Cosmetics is on a mission to make a difference. So with every purchase, they support organizations that help communities thrive from battling domestic abuse to homelessness to cancer 
and more. So go ahead and try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Right now, Food Heals Nation listeners can get an exclusive 20% off their first order by visiting thrivecosmetics.com slash foodheals. That's thrivecosmetics.com, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S.com slash foodheals to save 20% off. All right, next up, my interview with Sarah. Roll it, Roxy. All right, please welcome the creator of Big Kid Problems, Sarah Merrill Hall, to the show. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Okay, so next time we're going to do this in person because Food Heals Nation, we just found out we're basically neighbors. (laughs) (laughs) We realized we live about five blocks away from each other, and here we are like digitally recording this. Yes, the pandemic changed everything because I did do some remote recordings before when I started Food Heals, but most of them were in person. And I'm telling you, those were the best interviews ever. So next time you're coming to the Food Heals podcast studio, you can probably walk here. Yeah, for sure. I I do miss those in-person interviews. They they really are so fun. Yes. Okay. So Food Heals Nation, when you're done listening to this episode, shoot me what questions you have for Sarah and we'll do a follow-up Q&A with Sarah in person. But let's tell everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do. How about we start with that? (laughs) Yes. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Sarah. I run an account on Instagram called Big Kid Problems. That's where like a lot of people are familiar. Um, It's a funny account. It's a lot of memes, a lot of jokes. Um, Just here for the giggles. And I also have two podcasts, the Big Kid Problems podcast and Bottle Service, which is my new little pregnancy and postpartum endeavor. Um, But yeah, I started started Big Kid Problems back when I was in college getting ready to graduate and, you know, just kind of wanted to make jokes about like not being ready to enter the adult world. And I just did it for fun. It was like a total hobby that I did, um, you know, from the basement of my sorority house. And I started growing a following and I kept at it. And I've been doing it for over 10 years. And like the jokes have really kind of grown up with me. A lot of people who've been following my account have kind of like gone through these big life transitions alongside of me. You know, I used to be like out there dating and then, you know, went through getting engaged and getting married and, and now having a baby. And I just like to poke fun at my own life. And um, yeah, that's kind of the genesis of uh, what I do. (laughs) And what do you think was so relatable to people? What was it that people, is it because like, oh, we're going through the same experiences at the same time and here this person is actually telling it like it is and not pretending it's flowery and living this perfect life? Yeah, I I do think it's that. Or even if you're not going through like the exact um, same stage that I am in in life, um, I think a lot of it is relatable. A lot of people who have maybe been there uh, find humor in it. Um, I mean, kind of the fun part of my account is for the longest time, it was completely anonymous. So I, you know, I didn't want anybody to know it was me because I was saying all these like outlandish, crazy things. But that's what makes it great is I was I was really saying the shit that you think like deep in your brain, but would never say out loud. Um, right. And I think that's uh, that's kind of what made it fun. And then I started putting my name on it. So I had to like dial it back a notch, but uh-huh. <laughs> but we're, we're still kind of in that vein of like trying to keep it real and honest and uh, yeah, just, you know, showing the truth of all the big kid problems that we face. What was the the reason that you decided to kind of come out of the closet and be like, hi, it's me, everyone? It's me. Um, Really, when I kind of started seeing other creators, like, making a business out of their account. So to kind of paint the picture for you, I was doing – I mean, I was doing this anonymously. It was so fun, and I love doing it. But I was basically, like, you know, going to my corporate job every day, sneaking off to the bathroom and, like, posting – um, material, you know, and and it was this big secret. And I think I started looking around and seeing other accounts. Um, God, I think back to like the fat Jewish who was just like repost, like I was creating memes. He was like reposting memes, but he started getting like all these crazy brand deals and like making all this money. And I'm like, here I am like shoveling the shit at my corporate job, you know, like having to wake up early, get into an office and work for the man. And I could be maybe making like jokes on the internet and for a living, like I could maybe turn this into a business. So um, I played around with it. I tried to make it a business without my face or name attached to it. And eventually it was just easier to kind of come out of the closet and be like, hey, this is me. Um, 
And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a learning curve, but it's been, it's been fun. Yeah. It's crazy. What amazing opportunities there are online these days to be yourself and get paid for it. And that's something I'm super passionate about. That's when I built food heals. I was like, wait, I can talk about health and wellness. People want to listen and get paid. What? Like yeah. it was such an amazing thing. And that was almost eight years ago when I started this show and it's just been going strong ever since. And I had to be the face of it. So I didn't get to hide behind anything, but there are other accounts that I've been wanting to start. Cause I'm like, I really want to talk about this, but have no one know it's me. So you're inspiring me right now that it might be possible. <laughs> totally. And that's, what's so cool is I feel like if there's anything that you're like passionate about or, you know, like talking about, there's somebody who equally wants to listen and who um, is also passionate about it. So I love seeing all the like different niche accounts that there are. And, you know, and I love finding ones that like resonate with me. And, and that's, what's so cool about creating content is like, there's so many different ways to do it. And so many, you know, ways to succeed. I think it's incredible. I'm, I, you know, I see younger, um, creators coming out of the woodwork now and just like crushing it from the beginning. I mean, it took me a really long time to build a following, but there's just so much opportunity out there. It's like a pretty, I think it's a really fun um, and exciting space to be in for sure. Yeah. And I know that you're also passionate about mental health. And before we get into that, one thing I would say that uh, what's interesting about Instagram and what's great about your content is like, okay, with Instagram, you can curate what you see every day. And we're all scrollers. Let's just be honest here. Okay. When you're bored, when you have a minute, when you're in line, when you have a pause, probably people at the stoplights, they are scrolling. And so I want to curate my feed so that my mental health is only uplifted and not affected because there's so much negativity. There's so much comparison. There's so much BS. So it's like, if I curate my feed, to follow accounts that are uplifting, that are funny like yours, that are relatable like yours, it can actually uplift my day rather than bring me down. And we know a lot of people, they're listening to the news, they're watching this, and they're they're curating their lives online in such a way. And what I mean is their feeds, not their own lives, but they're watching things that are bringing them down and affecting our mental health. So what have you seen in terms of your content, how it's like helped people, inspired people, made them laugh? Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny you say that because I, you know, I run two different accounts. Like I have my big kid problems, which is like my funny, you know, account. And then I have my personal account. And it is so interesting. Like if, when I log into each one of them, how different the experience is, you right. know, um, it's, you know, my big kid one is, it's, it's a lot of accounts like mine. It's just like, I'm basically, I just see memes all day long and it is uplifting and it's, and it's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's some feedback that I get a lot of the time is just like, it's, it's fun. It's, it's carefree. It's like literally a daily giggle. Like it's not meant to be anything, um, extreme. Um, but also, I mean, I, I have like throughout the course of running this account, I've been through a lot of stuff and I talk about a lot of stuff, um, in a relatable way that I think people resonate with which I think is kind of cool. So you're getting like, you know, a giggle, but you're also like, oh, uh, maybe a little bit relieved at the same time that like you're not the only person going through specific shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like the it's like the memes that you're like, that is so me and my bestie Ashley or my bestie Ella. And then you tag them or you send them that meme because it's so relatable to what your struggle is or what you're going through. And it's usually pretty funny, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think that we all need that, you know, and just like the daily reminder, like, oh, I'm not the only person going through this right now. Exactly. Well, talk to me about mental health and maybe some of your adulting struggles that you overcome from affording rent to changing careers and navigating breakups and how, what are some of your tips for navigating these things and really reducing the anxiety and stress in our everyday lives around these big kid problems that we're all facing? Yeah. Oh, it's so fun because I mean, I've been running this account for so long and like, I, I say like the quote unquote big kid problems have changed over time. Um, and really when I started this account versus where I'm at now are it's so different. Like I've obviously like grown and learned a lot. And um, in the area of mental health, I mean, I remember specifically being in my mid twenties um, when I had a lot, when I was, you know, putting out content in there and just my anxiety getting so bad. I felt like I was in a job that I wasn't supposed to be in. I'm like, what is my career? Um, what am I doing with my life? am I ever going to find a partner? Like things like that. Um, one of the things that really helped me with my mental health was like listening to other podcasts. Like I feel like I started listening to podcasts around this time, like in my mid twenties and like learning so many tools, 
um, learning so many like little things that I could do in my daily life that would help. So like anything from mindset stuff to going out to the gym or, you know, learning how different, different people treated their anxiety. I started picking up tools and that's like actually why I started um, my own podcast, my Big Kid Problems podcast was to like explore all these different tools and modalities of, you know, how to kind of grow up and get through the stressful stuff of Big Kid Problems, of our, of all of our problems that we face as humans. <laughs> so, I mean, I've tried, I have tried so many different things when it comes to anxiety from very, you know, normal things from like journaling and meditating to like crazy things like perennial sunning, you know, like I've, I've, kind of, like, <laughs> I've tried it all. And um, what I found is that like you kind of there's no magic pill, but trying a lot of different stuff and like seeing what certain things work for you is like all you can do. And just like I'm very conscious now as an adult to like have a kind of a pulse on where I am mentally. You know, some, di- some days I wake up and I'm like I can already kind of feel like mentally the wheels are going a little too fast and I'm feeling a little anxious. And just even like when I can take stock of where I'm at at any given day and be like, you know what? Okay, I need to schedule in a workout. Or I need to relax a little bit because I'm starting to feel that anxiety creep in. That's just something that I've like kind of learned with age is to just like be really conscious and kind of like treat yourself almost like your own little guinea pig and like be aware of where you're at and take stock. Yeah. I was just at a meeting the other day and it was me and two other girlfriends of mine and we're working on some business projects and we all got there late, rushed, Hmm. stressed. And we just sat there and we're like, all right. Everybody take a breath. Like just, we sat at this restaurant table and did some deep breathing together because we were all so frantic. Our breath was caught up in our chest. We're all like, oh my God, sorry, I'm late. This happened and this happened and this happened. And it's like, no, it's okay. Like, let's just take a moment and let that go so we can be fully present and be in this moment. There's no judgment. No one cared that we were all late because there was no parking that day. You know what I mean? (laughs) And so it was just like, let's just breathe and relax. And then we can have a really great day. But taking those mental health or mental break moments, I think for me, have become essential because we're always rushed. As conscious as we are, when we're even if we meditate the days away, like we are always in a rush. There's always someplace you got to be or you got to go, whether it's on a Zoom or somewhere you have to drive. And so I'm just all about taking those moments and slowing down, even right now, just like not being anxious about what is the next question I'm going to ask Sarah, you know, just <laughs> taking a moment, right? Totally, totally. And that's something, Um, actually, something that started helping me a lot was, uh, especially in pregnancy, because I had, I went through pregnancy recently and was in a, I had, I kind of experienced this, which I was not expecting was to be like pretty depressed every day. Like I, I really was like in a dark place mentally my entire pregnancy. And something I started doing to help was just, you know, every day when I would wake up, I would almost, I would like assign myself a number. I'd be like zero being I am in the worst possible place, 10 being like elated and full of joy. Like where am I at? Yeah. And just like getting clear on a number, like really, it really helped me kind of like get an understanding of where I was at mentally because sometimes you feel like you're so low and you're like, oh my God, I'm always going to feel this way or I've been low for so long. But then I would like look back at the month and be like, oh no, see, I had good days here. I was a little bit better last week. You know, you just kind of are able to kind of take stock a little bit better that way. I, I felt like that was helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And so take me through your pregnancy journey Hmm. because you did have some mental and physical effects. And then after Big Kid Big Kid Problems, that led you to create Bottle Service by Big Kid Problems, which is navigating more of motherhood. So take me through the journey of what you went through and then where you're at now. Yeah. So uh, that's what's that's what's been interesting with my account is because I've been doing this since college, it's kind of been with me through major life changes. You know, like I mm-hmm. remember career changes in my early 20s and then like going through dating life and going through getting engaged and planning a wedding and all of that stuff kind of got infused into my content in a weird way. Um, mm-hmm. And then I knew coming in, my husband and I were like planning on getting pregnant and we're trying to have a baby. And I knew when I did get pregnant that I was going to want to talk about it a lot. Yeah. But I didn't want it to like oversaturate 
big kid problems because I was like, that is only like only a small part of my audience is going to care, you know? So Mm -hmm. I kind of had the idea of, I'm like, when I get pregnant, I'm going to create a separate podcast. That's all things pregnancy. I want it to go like week by week of pregnancy with me and it be a place where I can like literally talk about everything and not feel like I couldn't. So that was the idea. And the day I got pregnant is the day I started that podcast. Wow. Not really knowing. (laughs) Yeah. Not really knowing how hard it would be. Like I, you know, I had had these expectations of what pregnancy would be like. And, you know, I was so excited. It was going to be like this amazing thing. I'm like, I let, like, I'm going to get to eat all this food and chill and like wear cute Uh flowy dresses. And like, I was made for this. And, um, (laughs) and was not the case. Like I, so many things surprised me in pregnancy. Um, so it was kind of fun to have like this outlet where I could talk about like all the real shit that was going on. But yeah, it was it was a surprise. It was definitely a surprise. And what were some of the struggles that were unexpected? Oh my God, so many things. Well, like what I just mentioned, like I was so excited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have all these fun pregnancy cravings and I get to like eat all this food and not feel bad about it. Yeah. I couldn't eat anything. Like my entire pregnancy, I had the craziest food aversions where I would be, yeah, I had never even heard of this. And I would, I would be like starving. I'd be so hungry. Or my husband would be like, you haven't eaten today and you're growing our child. Like you have to eat. And I would be like, I'm so hungry, but any food just sounds disgusting to me. Like I could, it was, it was such a struggle the entire nine months. Um, of figuring out like what food to put in my body because I just like wasn't having it. That was one thing that really surprised me. I mean, there was a lot, all of it. Could you have drinks? Because I'm like, if I if I'm not hungry, I'll just have my nutritional drinks because then at least I get my nutrition. Even if I'm like, I I have food aversion today, which happens when I think when I'm sick, that's when it usually happens. Yeah, I um I pretty much survived on smoothies. Um, yeah, smoothies yeah. are what got me through. But even like I would have one smoothie and then be like, I can never have this smoothie ever again. And even to this wow. day, <laughs> even to this day, um, there's like a juice bar by us, and there's like certain dr- there's certain smoothies I cannot touch. I'm like this tastes like, this tastes like trauma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you created that relationship in your brain with that product, and it's yeah, it's hard to get rid of those for sure, for sure. But yeah, I mean, there was tons of things that surprised me in pregnancy. And, um, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that, you know, isn't so glam, like glamorous or like fun to talk about. And that's why I think a lot of people don't know. Um, another big thing for me is, I mean, I had heard of, I had heard of postpartum depression. Like I, I kind of mentioned earlier, um, I was really mentally not well, like my entire pregnancy, but I thought that that was something that happens to you after birth. Like I I think all of us have heard of postpartum depression. I didn't know that perinatal depression was something that happens to a a significant percentage of women where like you actually Mm -hmm. get those postpartum side effects in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was a surprise. uh, And having to deal with that was was weird and I wasn't really totally prepared for um, because, you know, it's a mental challenge, but you're also like in this extreme physical challenge where, you know, I, they say like pregnancy can, is like your body's like running a marathon every day. Like it's expending so much energy. And then also you're trying to like, you know, curb your, your mental, the mental load as well. Um, that was surprising. There's so much, there's so much. <laughs> and did you find because you had your Twitter and Instagram and podcast and brand that that was an outlet and talking about those things did that help you or what tools did you have to help you navigate this depression and these feelings that you weren't expecting? Yeah, so the podcast um really kind of became a crutch and what's funny is I I re- so I started recording I started recording that podcast and I did a lot of research for it because every week of pregnancy, you know, I wanted to give my take on like what was going on that week, but I also wanted to talk about like what physically was happening to your body, what was happening to your baby every week. I think that's like one of the coolest things about pregnancy is there's just like so much that changes um, every single week. Like you're growing eyeballs one week and like the next wow. you're growing like a sternum, you know, like it's just yeah. wild. Um, so I was doing a ton of research 
for the podcast, which I think was helpful because I ended up like learning a lot about like certain symptoms that I was going through and just how normal it was and why it was happening to me. Um, like the perinatal depression, for example, it, it hit me at like, you know, a specific week in pregnancy. I, I want to say it was like week 17 or 18. And when I started doing research, it's like there was a hormone that goes through your body at, at that specific point in pregnancy because it's like growing something in the baby. And that spike in the hormone can trigger um, that that perinatal depression. So it kind of helped me get through a lot of stuff because I realized, you know, it, it things were outside of my control and um, there was reasons for why things were happening. And um, when I, uh, when I started putting the podcast out there, cause I recorded a bunch of episodes before I launched the podcast, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know if you know, I wanted to make sure that the pregnancy was viable and wanted to get to a certain safe point in pregnancy before I even announced. So I had about totally. like, yeah, I had like 12 weeks, um, of episodes recorded before I put it out into the world. And I remember sitting there being like, am I sure I want to put this out there? Right. <laughs> you know, like, am I sure? Um, because, you know, it had been a struggle for me that that first trimester was really brutal. And, you know, certain days I had recorded like on my bathroom floor, you know, like, bef- and I had been crying like five minutes before recording, you know. Um, so I was a little iffy of, of putting it out. Um, yeah. But when I did, I mean, it was really helpful because I started hearing from so many other women who were going through very similar experiences or could relate, or it was helping them in a certain way. And it it did become very cathartic uh, Mm -hmm. as I continued to record and just know that a, I wasn't alone and, and B I was at least kind of using my experience to help others. And I think that that really helped push me through. Yeah, no, that's great. And I have my story is not the same, but similar in terms of like, First, I was a podcast listener and so many podcasts changed my life because I was like, this is my friend that gets me that's talking in my ears right now. She doesn't (laughs) know me, but she knows me. And like, you just, you can gain so much and, and it helps you navigate your own life when you hear someone going through the same struggle and how they overcame it or what they're feeling that day. And then on the other side of it, having my show Food Heals, there's been times where I've been more vulnerable than I maybe remember. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have somebody I don't know that well say something to me about that trauma or about that vulnerability. I'm like, how the F do you know this about me? (laughs) Oh, that's right. I told the world. I don't know who's listening. (laughs) It really is like like a funny thing that happens when you're podcasting. You like forget that, oh, other people are listening to this conversation. (laughs) Yes. Or I've said something on someone else's show that was vulnerable, completely forgot that I did it. And then it comes back five years later and you're like, what? What I say? Oh, yeah, that's true. Huh? Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> like, it's so crazy. But I think when you have the idea to put something out into the world and it truly helps people, that's personally what helps me get through some of my trauma. So it's like I started Food Heals because I lost both of my parents to cancer. I discovered that food had the ability to kill us or heal us. And I wanted to find out how do you use food to heal our bodies? I wanted to learn about nutrition, functional medicine, healing mental trauma, healing emotional trauma, healing physically, all of that stuff. And so I just started interviewing people way smarter than me or people Mm -hmm. who had been through incredibly interesting experiences and come out the other side, healing chronic disease, healing themselves with food. And so it was just a place for me to learn and grow and change. And at the same time as I was learning, growing and changing, my listeners got to come on the journey with me and learn for themselves and their own families as well. And so that as a healing tool, I think is incredible for if you're like, well, if I share my story, what will people think? They will say thank you very much for sharing your story. Yeah, a hundred percent. And when you hear that, like, you know, something that maybe somebody listened to, it really impacted them or it made them change like the way they viewed something. I mean, that 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 is like the shit that keeps you going. I mean, I don't know about you, but there are some days that I'm like, oh, do I really want to keep podcasting? It's so much work. You totally. know, it's it's a lot. Um, but those are the moments um, that I think are really rewarding. And um, I mean, I've experienced that. And it's so... It, I've experienced that in my other, pa- my original podcast. And then in this new one, I mean, pregnancy is such an intimate thing. Um, and it's weird. Like the people who are like listening to the week by week episodes, like we like, like they, they're like, we're friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> absolutely. Like, you know, like they, uh, but it was really cool. And this is my favorite part of doing this whole thing is like, 
we're, we're in DMs. Like I'm, I'm always in my DMs, like talking to people who are listening. But what's the best thing ever is now people are sending me pictures of their babies that they had while they were listening to the podcast. And I'm like, this is amazing that I like can share in this joyful life moment with complete strangers. <laughs> So take me through some of your maybe most funniest or most viral or most shared posts. I'm on the Instagram right now. So Food Heals Nation, it's instagram.com slash big kid problems. You post your funny memes, your funny tweets like, welcome to your 30s. Indigestion is the new hangover. Or I have a really good therapist if you need a recommendation. My therapist is Nestle chocolate chip. Like funny, relatable, shareable. What are some of your favorite pieces of content that you've shared? Oh my gosh. There's a lot. I mean, I had one recently that I liked. I mean, and and what's funny is like the stuff that I really like isn't always necessarily like what performs the best. Right. (laughs) You know, like, um, or the ones that go most viral. Actually, I did have one go really, really viral, viral recently where it was like a video of these guys driving in a car. And they're like singing along to a song. And I kind of like labeled each one of them as like my different coping mechanisms. And then the driver, (laughs) the driver of the car was this guy who like looked really pissed off. So it was like, it's like my anxiety. And then the guy's singing in the back. And I had like them labeled as different coping mechanisms of like listening to a podcast, going for a walkie or like talking to a friend. And like that I didn't think was going to do well at all. And it like totally went over like 5 million views. I'm like, what? Wow. (laughs) So you kind of never, and this business I've realized, like you never really know what's going to work or what's not. And I just kind of try to create stuff that I think is appealing and funny and they're not all going to be winners. (laughs) It's kind of like a motto that I live by. It is so interesting because even as the curators of our content, we think we know best. And I'll have interviews where I'm like, I think that was good. It wasn't my best or whatever. And then people will be like emailing me, thank you so much. That helped me so much. I'm like, great. Okay. I thought I did not know that that was going to be the big one. And then others that I think are the most epic interviews I've personally ever heard, I get crickets. And I'm like, y'all don't think that was the best interview you've ever heard or the most interesting story. It's really interesting. So you never know. You never know. Have you ever read the book? Um, And for any of my other creatives that are listening to this, if you haven't heard of this book, I highly recommend it. But um, The War of Art. Yes. 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 Had to read that in grad school. Oh my God. I read that and it like totally changed the way that I view creating content because I used to kind of think of like, what can I make that people are going to like? Like what trends are out there? What's going on where I, I, I think people will like this? And now I kind of think in terms of, no, I create I create based off of like who I know best and that's me. So like yeah. I create content yeah. that I would like to consume and I don't really think about like an outside audience or at least I try not to. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And that is such a good book. I should probably reread it in the context of now I have, yeah, like this business based on this online business based on my passion, which I don't think I had when I read the book because it's been over 10 years, I believe, since I read it. Definitely worth a reread. And I like tell anybody who's in a creative space, I'm like, read this book. So good. Food Heal Station, I hope you're enjoying this interview with Sarah. So in part two of my interview with Sarah, we accidentally stumbled upon the fact that we have a shared obsession for the reality show called Vanderpump Rules and the current scandal called Scandaval, which will just not die. Even though the show is over, we've seen all the reunions and the secret revealed episodes. This scandal won't die. And I think it's because just like Sarah's content, it's relatable if it's happened to us or we're trying to figure out how somebody could do this to somebody else. And that's why we're so obsessed with this controversy. And so before I get into it with Sarah, I wanted to share with you a little bit of behind the scenes so that you understand what it is that we're talking about. And you're not just hitting hitting that skip ahead button 15 seconds, like get to the juice. This is the juice. I think this is such an interesting topic. And so I'll tell you a little bit of the backstory just so you feel prepared. I have talked about it on previous episodes of 
Food Heals. But in case you didn't hear those, here is some of the backstory on Scandaval. Vanderpump Rules is a show and it was created by Lisa Vanderpump, kind of a spinoff off of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And so it's about a group of friends and they all work at this restaurant called Sir, which used to be down the street from my house. Throughout the 10 or so years that they've been on the air, the cast members have gone on to do many more things than just you know, work at a restaurant. They're all obviously influencers and they have multiple restaurants like the Toms have Tom Tom, which also I used to live down the street from. And now they even have a new restaurant called Shorts and Sandy. So we basically followed these characters on their journey from being waitresses to building businesses. And we're just very involved in their lives. And I feel super close to the stories because I've followed it since the first few years. And then living down the street from them, I would see cast members all the time, actually have conversations with them. Um, at their various bars and restaurants and just feeling like this cast of characters was a staple in the West Hollywood community that I used to live in. So anyways, the story goes, long story short, if you don't watch the show, the story goes that Tom and Ariana were a couple on the show for about nine or 10 years. Um, When the show first started, they were not a couple, they became a couple. And then they've lived together, bought a house together. And I just thought they were in love and happy and everything was great. Well, it turns out that for the past, uh, I believe it was nine or 10 or 11 months, I can't remember exactly. Tom has been cheating on Ariana with one of her best friends, a girl named Raquel, who is not only one of her best friends, but also used to be engaged to one of their other best friends, James Kennedy, who Tom, the cheater, actually helped plan and pay for their engagement party like announcement. And it's just really, really messy. So you've got this group of friends who are all close. You've got this couple who have been together for like nine or 10 years, living together, planning their life together, planning kids together, all of that stuff. And it turns out there was this illicit affair going on. And the two people that were very well trusted in this group have been lying to everyone. And that is Tom and Raquel. There are so many layers to this story. I won't get into it because this is the Food Heals podcast. You're not necessarily here for Vanderpump gossip, but I cannot get enough of it. And I found out that Sarah cannot get enough of it either. So we do talk about it. And where I think it is related to health is this. I have been in relationships where I was lied to, where I did not realize that I was with a narcissistic personality or a borderline personality or someone on the spectrum of sociopathy. And because it's happened to me multiple times with both men and women, girlfriends um, have also done this to me, I realized that to protect our mental health, We need to become so aware and we need to be able to look out for the signs of these characteristics of narcissism and that there are people in this world who do not have your best interests at heart, who are not as altruistic as they seem, who use you, abuse you, and throw you out, but maybe they first love bombed you and so you're always seeking that connection and now they're manipulating you and you're like, what is going on? I don't understand because you are an empathic person. You love with your whole heart. You would never betray someone. You don't lie. And so you don't understand that other people do and they emulate your loving behavior to bring you in. And it's all a lie. And that is one of the scariest things that, I mean, one of the biggest life lessons of mine has been that because I always see the best in people. And then after being screwed over multiple times now with people that did not love me, who were pretending to love me, to use me and abuse me, I just want to get this on everyone's radar. So I think that's why I'm personally obsessed with this type of scandal because it's like relatable to me, the shock. And I'm still trying to get to the bottom of how could these people act in this way. And so if you're like me, we have to be vigilant about protecting ourselves from these types of predators because people like this go after the most well-meaning, loving people. They go after people who have been through traumas because we're easy prey, okay? So if someone comes to you and love bombs you after you've been through a trauma, they may be 
out to hurt you. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that because it's happened to me multiple times and I don't want it to happen to you because it Fs with our mental health. And there's not enough healing food in the world and healing juices and smoothies and superfoods to get you out of that situation. You have to use your own fortitude, your own mental capacity. You have to get yourself out of that situation and put up boundaries to protect yourself from it happening in the future and to know this, the qualities to look for in a person and to look up. What is a covert narcissist? What is an overt narcissist? What does it mean to be on the spectrum of sociopathy? What is a borderline personality type so that you can protect yourselves in the future? All right. That's my rant. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the rest of my episode with Sarah. We touch on Vanderpump. We touch on a lot more, including a really interesting birth story and something that all women need to know before giving birth. Sarah shares something very important. And then stay tuned to the end of the episode, because like I said, I'm going to talk about some healing foods for healing your hormones. But first, we all know that a complete night of sleep is absolutely essential when we're working towards optimizing our wellness and our well-being. That's why I love Cured's Sleep Bundle. It combines their best-selling Zen and their most potent CBN, and that is the answer that guarantees that you get that full night of sleep every single night. So what's in it? Well, Zen is a blend of functional mushrooms, adaptogens, and full-spectrum cannabinoids. The CBN Zen extract is a lesser known cannabinoid found in the hemp plant, and these supplements were designed to support the two most critical stages of our body's natural sleep cycles. That's your REM sleep and your non-REM sleep. That is still a deep sleep. We need to get both and we need to cycle through them. It's very, very important. We don't miss out on those because it's going to affect our next day, right? And these things have worked so well for me, so I would love for you to give them a try as well and let me know if they work for you. Then they've got their Cured Raw CBN Oil. That's got 30 milligrams of CBD and 5 milligrams of CBN, and together the CBD and CBN create a synergistic whole body effect. And you'll feel it when it starts to kick in. You'll notice every inch of your body starts to kind of soften and you start to feel like a deeper state of relaxation, like you're laying on a cloud or like you're just being engulfed, enveloped in like a warm, comfy blanket. And then once you're asleep, again, the Zen is going to help you cycle in and out of that non-REM, deep sleep, into REM and back again. And right now, you know that we scored an exclusive discount code for Food Heals Nation. You can grab Zen and CBN in the sleep bundle for an extra 10% off of your already discounted price by visiting curednutrition.com slash foodheals. You know the coupon code foodheals is going to give you 20% off. Then you're going to get an extra 10% off your order. These products have zero grogginess. These products help you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on your day. And it really helps with that mental chatter before bed. So again, it's all over at curednutrition.com slash food heals. Sleep well, Food Heals Nation. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data-driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals.
With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. All right, now back to my interview with Sarah. Okay, I see you have some Sandoval, Scandoval related <laughs> memes. Are you a Vanderpump Rules fan? I am. I I was so deep in Scandoval. I get really I, I get really deep into like these niche things. Like most recently the submarine shit. I was oh, God, I was yeah. it, I became a submarine expert. Like <laughs> Right, right, right. Well that couldn't have happened because blah 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 blah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I was like, we'll do that too. Yeah. I was like, actually, it's a submissible or a submissible or whatever like the correct term was. Like, I just, right, I right. go too deep. But Scandaval was one of those two. Like, I, I was deep diving. TikTok really does do that to you. Where I was like, I was just going real in on like the conspiracy theories. Like, what? Where is Rachel? Is she pregnant? Where is Rachel? <laughs> I know. <laughs> do we still know? We still don't know. Do we? To be honest, like I, I have like I check every day. Like. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll let you know. But like, no, like she's just fully like flown the coop. Like she's she's like laying low in a way that I did not think was possible in this day and age. Exactly. Right. Like, how has she not been spotted? Something is up. She her her family is keeping her locked in a room somewhere without her phone. So she can't even send a damn tweet or a text. Just send a letter to their house where Ariana lives. Like, what are you doing, girlfriend? So what? crazy. I really I really want to know what's going on there. Like, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. I have an unhealthy obsession with this. So I started Vanderpump Rules maybe two or three years in, got hooked, found out I lived down the street at this time from Sir, from <laughs> then Tom Tom, right? Um, from Pump. I used to go and I would go to the James Kennedy see you next Tuesdays. And I went to the girls girls night when Billy Lee got mad because she wasn't invited. I mean, I was in the drama. I'm in multiple shots of the show. I am on the cast. Like, no like, I, just way. Have to say it. I was in so many shots. I would have my friends like from North Carolina be like, did I just see you in the background of banner pump rules with a cocktail dancing? Yes. Yes, you did. Okay. So my sister-in-law and I, and like a couple of my friends who also love the show, we were stalkers. We'd go all the time. I got James Kennedy's number in my phone. Okay. I just want to let everyone know that I am literally VIP. That's why I'm so obsessed with this story because I thought I was a part of the cast and because Tom Scandaval was the nicest person on actually both Tom Toms. Really? So nice. yeah. They are so, they will talk to you forever. They answer all your questions. They are exactly who they are on the show. They're, they were sweet. They were kind. They were funny. They're engaging. They're like always nice to you whenever you, uh, Tom, Sandoval, before Tom Tom opened the second half of their bar and expanded, he took us on a whole tour of the back end. He took us back behind the place. He showed us all the things. This is where this happened. This is where we're building this. Like, so nice, so kind. They're all so fun. That's why I felt like I was betrayed by one of my best friends because when you watch the show for 10 years and you've met the cast, yeah. I think they're my friendship circle. So I was so mad at Tom. And yeah. I still am. You're like, how dare you? But actually, that's, making, dare you? that's making me feel actually kind of bad that you met him in person and he was like a nice genuine person because I, maybe I'm projecting but I'm like this guy's a fraud like he's he's just been a fake this entire time um he's a bad person and and now I'm kind of looking at it as a lens of like if he is a nice guy and like he just like really fucked up and uh made this huge error like what is his life right now you know like yeah I it's getting it's getting a little crazy where I'm like starting to kind of like the I was so mad and now the pendulum's starting to swing the other way where I'm like kind of starting to feel a little bad for these guys. So I do because I'm such a compassionate person, there is a piece of me that feels bad, but at the same time, we cannot excuse this behavior. And what I think, and on Food Heals, we do not diagnose <laughs> any disease. However, my um view of this would be that he is 
um, on the spectrum of being a covert narcissist. And I didn't know what that was years ago. And now I do because I've unfortunately encountered multiple narcissists in my life, male and female, who were acting one way to my face. They're very good at emulating loving human behavior so that they can get what they want out mm. of you. They can get your adoration, your, your dedication to them. And then they flip the script and they show you who they really are, but then they already have you. So then you're like, but wait, I love you. I want to get back to where we were with a girlfriend or a guy friend, like, or a boyfriend. Like it's literally like this game that they play with you and they're hiding in plain sight. And we have no idea idea because on the outside, they're the greatest guy in town. And so I don't know, that could, I could be absolutely wrong, but that's my impression after watching the show and knowing people like this in my life and now interviewing a lot of people on the show who have also dealt with both overt narcissists, which are more obvious, like they have a grandiose sense of self. They act like they're like a Jax. Jax yeah. would be the overt narcissist. He is has a he thinks he's the best thing that ever happened to the city of Los Angeles, right? And then Tom would be the covert because of course he might have a little ego, but it's not even about that. It's really about like, no, I do everything for everything. Let me pay for you. Let me buy you this suit. Let me do this for you. I show let me show you how great I am and how much I give to you. And that is the covert narcissist because you think they're the best, but they're all doing it selfishly so they can use all of this against you later and manipulate you and gaslight you and all of that. So that's how I see this. And I could be wrong, but that is my opinion. Yeah. I don't think you can portray somebody like that, you know, to that degree without being a narcissist, without like right. lacking some real empathy, you know, like right. it's pretty insane. I know that we don't diagnose people on this podcast, but like, what are, no, your, <laughs> but, like, what are your thoughts on Rachel? Like what, what are we, what's going on there? Because I'm puzzled. I am puzzled with that one. I am extremely puzzled. And again, I don't know, but my impression is she's a combination of a lost little Bambi eyed bee yes. and lacking empathy, some probably on the spectrum of sociopathy, I'm not saying don't quote me and say, Ali said she's a sociopath. That's not what I'm saying. But there are levels of different personality types and a psychiatrist could, or, or a psychologist or psychiatrist could say this way better than me. But I think there's a level where she lacks enough empathy that she wasn't seeing her actions as terrible as they were and the hurt that she was causing because she does, not that she has no empathy. I believe she has some empathy, but I don't think she has a lot, which enabled her to continue to be a cheater and be best friends with this person for what? What was it 11 nine months or something and most people couldn't do that i as an empathic i could never do it for one night i would die no, i would no, die I would of die. shame i i, I it, it's just unfathomable to people who have a lot of empathy but people who don't and who are also a little bit bambi eyed as <laughs> lala says they do not understand the hurt that they've caused so she everyone's like oh she's young no 28 is old I, it's not about age it's about where she is mentally and i don't think that she is mentally mature and i don't think she has a lot of empathy but i could be wrong what are your thoughts yeah um i did i did see this thing on tiktok which i thought was pretty interesting of just like how her values system is completely warped from uh, her days as like a pageant girl like if you think about it yes. like, she's been completely conditioned to like she gets her sense of self-worth from competing and winning and like I think she like her sense of worth came from like she was winning Tom like she was being chosen by Tom and like that right. to her is like where she got her value like something is something is so off there but um yeah we're this is not nobody nobody normally a normal person could not do that I'm, I just, I don't know how you, I don't know how you go on. Like I would feel, it would eat me alive. It would eat, it would me, eat alive. me alive. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so I agree with you. And that does make sense regarding the pageant thing. Cause I can't imagine, I didn't grow up, grow up in that. I could ask my friend, Jana, she's actually a pageant coach. What she sees when people leave the pageant world, are they constantly in competition with other females? My friend, Ashley, she was in, um, she was a big attorney and she didn't get to have female friends because all of the 
attorneys at her corporate law firm were in competition with one another. I've never experienced that. I work for myself. I'm, I, I feel grateful, but like I've never been in that world where you're in competition with every woman. I see women as my friends. Yeah. These people are, gro- are, 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 what's the word, like groomed to see other women as their competition that they have to beat and be better than, smarter than, prettier than. I can't even imagine what that cre- what kind of monster that creates. Yeah. Or like how rough of a life that has to be because- I mean, I I find so much support and comfort in other women and especially like going through pregnancy Same. and motherhood, like holy shit, that gets turned up times a thousand because the only yes. other people on the planet who know what you, you're going through are other women. And every right. woman who's gone through it is so empathetic and is like – Like I've reached out to my mom friends in just like dire situations and they are, they swoop in and are like, they will do anything because they've been there and they know. And I'm so grateful for the female relationships in my life. And, um, and they're, they're so important. So to not have that and to like actively push against that is like, it, it doesn't, I don't think it ends well for you. Yeah. And it's like, for me, it's like, does not compute. Like I don't understand. (laughs) I agree with you. My female friendships are what keeps me alive. Like I have a Rolodex of people when I am down, when I am not feeling like my best or that I can make it till tomorrow that I can text in a heartbeat. They will lift me up. They will switch my, flip my script instantly. Mm -hmm. And without them, I don't know if I'd be alive. I need my female friendships so much. I love them and adore them so much. I'm so grateful for them. I can't imagine turning on any one of them, taking their partner of 10 years, hmm. that's unfathomable. Yeah. I think I saw in an interview, like Ari- Ariana even said that. She's like, you know, with Tom, it's one thing because like men aren't shit. But like, <laughs> I think she was a more surprised by the betrayal from her close female friend. Like, yeah. 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 God, I love that this turned into a Vanderpump. Uh, deep dive. <laughs> oh my God. I would talk about it for two more hours, but let's get back to <laughs> kid problems before we wrap up. But I mean, I will diagnose a sociopath any day. I just can't do it on the show, but let's talk offline. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we're just, we're gossiping and chatting and this is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, because we do not diagnose, prevent, cure, or treat any disease on the Food Heals podcast. So, Sarah, take me through what are some of the things you would love to leave Food Heals Nation with today? We know you've got your two podcasts. Maybe start with big kid problems if you're in that season of life. If you're in the adulting season of life, maybe start with bottle service if you are pregnant, planning to be pregnant. You know, wherever you are in that journey, this might be a really relatable show for you to listen to. What are some things, uh, Sarah, that you want to leave us with today? Yeah, I'd say if you just want daily laughs and giggles, come come hang out on Instagram, Big Kid Problems. And for real, anybody who's pregnant or if you have like a friend who's pregnant, send them to bottle service. Um, what is what's interesting with that show, if you're if you're like in pregnancy, you kind of have to scroll down to the beginning of the episodes to find the week by week um, pregnancy episodes, but they are really helpful. I've, I've done a lot of research on each one. Like they're, they're not just like fun and entertainment, but they're also, um, there, there's good information in there. And, um, and you're getting like a human experience too, because there's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, I research, but then it's also one thing like when you're going through it yourself. Um, and, and I, I, I think I talk a lot about stuff that I wish I knew, you know, even after going through birth, like things I wish I knew before doing that. Um, so it is, it's a great community for anybody, like you said, who's pregnant, thinking about being pregnant, has a friend who's pregnant, wants to know what's going through. Even the guy, even the guys who I'm like, you know, this is a pregnancy podcast, but you should tune in and like, just get a better understanding of what your partner is going through. Um, but yeah, so for any of my, my women out there thinking about pregnancy, check it out. I mean, I can tell you, um, something to leave, something to leave people with is, um, just my personal experience. Like I was somebody who like, didn't even, didn't even, wasn't even totally sure I wanted to be a mom because I just like, you know, curated this life for myself. I really loved my life pre-pregnancy. I was really scared about losing it. Um, and just like, you know, turning into what I think the stereotypical mom role is, uh, of like being the selfless person whose like whole life becomes their kids. Like I just didn't want that. And, um, I think we're in an age right now where that's, 
you don't need to do that. Like there's actually, you can really kind of create the experience you want. You can be the kind of mom that you want to be. Um, it's, it's different now. And you, you could, you have a lot more control than I think you realize, um, in motherhood. So I guess that's just something I'd, I'd want people to think about. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. And, um, what was one thing that you said, um, you said that on the podcast, you talk about what you wish you would have known. What is one thing that you wish that you would have known that you can help people with today? (sighs) I mean, the one that, comes to mind uh and this is going to be real niche this is going to be niche but um there's just something that happens um when you're going through when you're getting ready for birth and i was actually listening to your episode um where you were talking about uh uh what's the term hypnobirthing yeah that was really interesting i'm into that really good i also i followed that school of thought where you kind of only you only focus on the positive sides of birth You only think about, you know, the positive outcome. And then in my experience, some shit hit the fan and things did not go right. And um, they were a little bit outside of my control. And it really flipped me upside down when I was in a position where all of a sudden my baby's being taken out of the room and I haven't held him. And it really, it really like fucked me up, (laughs) to be honest. And um, I want, if I could go back and prepare myself for birth, I would do, I would, I would not just focus on the positives and just only thinking about the positive things. You also want to go in with like knowledge of like common things that go wrong. Cause what happened with my baby was actually something that commonly happens, um, to C-section babies and breech babies specifically. But I didn't know that at the time. What did they do? um, Why did they take the baby out of the room? He, he had trouble breathing, which, um, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is actually something I've talked about on my podcast that I've gotten a lot of messages about from women who listened while they were pregnant and then this happened to them. And they're like, I'm so grateful that I knew that this happened because I would have freaked out if I didn't know. But okay, if you think yeah, about let's, it, let's share. yeah. Um, so if you think about it, like your baby is kind of like living in this amniotic fluid in your belly, right? Like they're breathing, they're not breathing air, they're breathing fluid. And so have you ever thought about that? Like, how does a baby go from like breathing fluid to breathing air when they're born? Um, no, I have not. <laughs> yeah, neither, neither had I. And I, I really, it's uh, not to get complicated or anything, but you, when you go through the labor process, that's something that's happening is your baby's getting ready to make that transition and you're pushed out of the uh, birth canal and that kind of helps flush out some fluid out of their lungs for that transition to happen. So my baby was a breech baby. Um, We knew we were going to have to do a C-section to get him out safely. And so I never went into labor and he was taken directly out of my stomach. He never went through the birth canal. So he came out not breathing. And, um, And they... Originally in my birth plan, like I was, I was, he was supposed to be born. They were going to take him. They run some quick like diagnostics on him. They make sure and they're like, he will be on your chest in one to two minutes. So I'm on the table and there's a giant clock next to me. And I, I see the time. I see one to two minutes go by. I'm like, where's my baby? Four minutes Mm -hmm. goes by. Six minutes go by. By the time eight minutes had gone by and no one had told me what was going on, I was full panic. Um, I would be. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, the nurse came over. They're like, we're going to have to take him out. He's having trouble breathing. Had I known that that happens, because again, like there, and there's a term for it, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the term. Um, No, but that's okay. But you mean like, that's actually something normal. That's not something to flip out about. Right. Like, uh, especially when it comes to like a, a, a baby being delivered that way. Like that's something my doctor I wish had shared with me. Like these are the things that could potentially happen. And that's what I mean of like, when I think of going back to going through the birth experience, like I wish, um, I knew about some things that some potential scenarios so that I could have been a little bit better prepared and not have just been, you know, so shocked when it wasn't the perfect birth that I had envisioned in my brain. Totally. Okay. Makes perfect sense. And then did you sick your husband after them? What happened? I mean, he, we're, we're in the OR together and we are both, that was like, it's a really um, surreal experience because you're both at such a loss and mm-hmm. we're both in, in a, in a, in a way like we're, we're there, we're trusting of our adult, the doctors and nurses. And we're in this like medical situation that we've never been in. And you just kind of like, you almost have to like, just lean on what the medical staff is telling you. And we both just kind of like 
did not know what to do. And so he, he stayed with me, um, you know, every ounce, every, like every ounce and fiber in my body wanted to like jump up off the table and run after my child, you know? Um, right, right. but you can't do that. So I, we just waited and it ended up being like two hours until I was reunited with my baby. And then, um, oh. the second that they put him on me, they they kept saying like, Oh, it's going to be a little bit longer. He's still not breathing. Right. And then the, when they finally brought him in and put him on my chest, he started breathing perfectly. So it was just, you know. Hmm, maybe you should have been on your chest a little sooner. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Um, but yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild. I actually, I mean, listening to your, for anybody who hasn't listened to your hypnobirthing episode, I thought it was really yeah. interesting. And um, I wish if I could go back, I probably would have done a birth um, or at least tried to. I, I probably wouldn't have been able to anyway because my child was breached, but I would have prepared for a home birth. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's really interesting and, um, and, uh, and something for anybody who's considering it to just like learn more about. Yeah, I think it's like we can plan and prepare as much as we want, but we still have to understand that something could go wrong. Like my dream would be to have a water home birth. Now, when I was in LA, I lived almost across the street from Cedar sinai So if something <laughs> went wrong, I had an easy, you know, okay, we'll go straight here. Y'all cut the baby out of me, whatever you need to do. So it's like being prepared as much as you can with the hypnobirthing, the breathing, the best possible outcome, imagining that, manifesting it, but also being prepared because anything can happen and understanding that just like you said, there are complications, but they could be totally normal. Yeah. So when you when a nurse says, oh, they're not breathing right, instead of you going, my baby is dead, you go, well, that's a normal thing that happens with a C-section. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that is power For so that sure. you don't have to stress and worry. So I hear you. Yeah. Knowledge, knowledge is power for sure. Um, so yes. Yeah. And, and now you have a healthy one and a half year old boy. So it's all good. Yes. He's amazing. He's doing really well. And motherhood's it's an insane job, but it's also like the most fun, incredible thing I've ever done with my life. Um, and I'm right. really happy to be doing this and, um, God already thinking about another one. <laughs> So, uh oh, here God. we go. I when I meet you in person, you're going to announce your pregnancy on the next episode of Food Heals. Got it. Uh, I don't know about all of that, but we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. Hopefully, I it's before that. People, I got someone to admit they were pregnant on my show, and then she said, Allie, take that out. And I did. But uh, it was only because she came over to my house in um, LA, and I had offered, I think, champagne or something. And uh. when she took it and didn't take a single sip, I knew, I knew. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we cut it out. So I'm just joking. But all right. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being here and chatting today all about big kid problems and also detouring onto my favorite obsession of Scandal, <laughs> which is it's kind of over because the show is over, but it's not truly over yet because we're still little investigators over here. I still watch the TikToks nightly and check Bravo and cocktails and see what Andy Cohen and all the people are saying. Listen to Lala's podcast. But anyways, so Big Kid Problems, you can follow on Facebook, Instagram at Big Kid Problems, Twitter, your website is thebigkidproblems.com. And then you have your also your personal Instagram, which is Instagram.com slash Sarah Merrill, M E R R I L L underscore Hall, H A L L. Anything else you want to leave us with? God, you did a really good job. Um, yeah, <laughs> find me there. And then also, of course, bottle service with Big Kid Problems anywhere you get your podcasts. Come hang out. Perfect. Yes, I forgot that one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Bottle service, which is also relatable when you go from bottle service at the club to bottle service in the crib. Yes, exactly. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance 
importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle lily is breathing. Think about everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside. But that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you got to filter your air. So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Sarah. You'll probably be hearing from her again at some point on Food Heals. Maybe she'll come and co-host or we'll do some Q&A. If you guys have questions, send them in since she apparently is my Nashville neighbor. So we already made plans to hang out. Um, So stay tuned for that. And I wanted to answer a question that came in and ask Allie. So Michaela says, I was on birth control for 12 years of my life before having my baby boy. As soon as I had him, I went back on. And now that I am off again, because I would like to have a baby, I feel like my hormones are raging out of control. I have never felt so unbalanced. And I know it's probably due to the fact that I was on birth control for all of those years, then had a baby. I can't imagine what's going on inside of me with these raging hormones, but I just don't feel right. What is the best way to start getting them back into balance so I can feel like myself again and have a healthy pregnancy number two. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Oh my gosh, what a great question. And I would always advise that you check in with a doctor on these topics, but I will give you my holistic perspective. So the first thing that I would say is the best way to get your hormones back into balance is to go see a functional medicine doctor. Functional medicine is a different way of testing. So they will test everything, your blood, your spit, your stool, your hair, all of the things, get a comprehensive look at your health. They'll find what hormones are out of balance, what ones are spiked, what ones your body may not be producing anymore. For example, what happened to me is when I got my hormones checked at Dr. Harani's office in LA, I found out that my body was not producing testosterone. Now we think of testosterone as the male hormone, but it's vitally important to functioning in our bodies too, ladies, like we've got to make testosterone. Every hormone has a function. So when they're out of balance, it can throw so many things out of balance, right? And so I had to get a bioidentical hormone cream that I would rub on my um, my inner arms, that's what it was for me, until my body got back into balance and started producing the right hormones again. Not only did I have to do that, but the functional medicine testing gave me a comprehensive look at my health and I found out what vitamins I was deficient in, what vitamins I needed more of, what what my body was overproducing, underproducing, all those good things. And so once I supplemented with the right supplementation, fixed my food, got my food allergies and food sensitivities diagnosed, and did the hormone, the testosterone cream, I was able to get my body back into balance. So I highly recommend, Michaela, finding a functional medicine doctor. Of course, you can find one locally near you. You can also use telehealth. I like Dr. Stephen Cabral, who has been on this podcast many times and helped so many Food Heals Nation members. So you're welcome to contact him or listen to his show, The Cabral Concept. So check him out at stephencabral.com and that's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-A-B-R-A-L 
Dot com. And I'm pretty sure if you order any of the supplements from him, I still have a discount code, try Food Heals or Food Heals 10. I know I need to find out, but just say Food Heals and hopefully you'll get a discount from them. Um, also, this is the Food Heals podcast. So I couldn't let you go without answering some of the best healing foods for hormones. Number one, of course, this is going to be no surprise to anyone listening to this show, is vegetables, but specifically cruciferous vegetables because these are a part of the brassica family and when they're cut or chewed or cooked they release this phytochemical and i'm not going to pretend that i know how to pronounce it but it's something like indole 3 carbonyl okay and what that does is it promotes liver function which is very very important for balancing our hormones because that's where the liver is going to filter everything through and help get the spent hormones cleared out and balance the hormones, okay? So what are some cruciferous vegetables? Bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, radish, okay? You can throw those all in a salad. You can cook most of those in a pot, right? How can you start incorporating those into your regular daily diet? Another important healing hormone food is good fats. Eating good fats is essential for hormone production because fats are actually hormone builders and they reduce inflammation. So always including a portion of fat in every meal. This could be from olive oil, flaxseed oil, avocado oil, raw unsalted nuts, seeds. I love nut butters, avocados themselves, right? Good healthy fats. Eat the rainbow. We talked about the cruciferous vegetables, but how many colors can you get on your plate? And if you're like, I can't eat all these vegetables, Allie, throw them in a smoothie, blend them up. Throw them in a soup, blend them up. You can do this. Then of course we need proteins. That's good for our blood sugar levels. I don't eat animal protein. I recommend plant protein. Some examples are lentils, quinoa, beans, tofu, soybeans, edamame, right? Chia seeds, chickpeas. And then when you get your food allergies and food sensitivities done, you can make sure that none of these are on your sensitivity or food allergy list. And then you can customize exactly which foods to use to help heal your hormones and get yourself back into balance. Another way to promote hormone harmony is to include herbs and spices in your food, fresh or dried herbs and spices that have anti-inflammatory properties. These are your gingers, your turmerics, your paprikas, your garlics. Those are so good for balancing your hormones. And then get some magnesium. You can take these as a pill. You can take these through food. Obviously, there's magnesium in so many of the food sources, many of the ones we've already talked about, like avocado, like tofu, like legumes, like nuts, like seeds, like whole grains, like quinoa, right? And then, of course, we want to balance our guts, feed our guts well. This is so important to ensure that our gut bacteria are absolutely flourishing. So what can you eat? fermented foods, olives, fermented vegetables. And then of course, take your probiotics. You know, I take Just Thrive probiotics every single day. Of course, we have a discount code. It's foodheals15 uh, to get 15% off justthrivehealth.com. Just Thrive Probiotics, I'm obsessed with. So you got to balance your gut when you're working on your hormones. So that is my advice when it comes to what foods to eat and functional medicine testing. This is really going to help you get back on track. Then I just wanted to add one last resource for you and anyone listening. You didn't exactly ask for this, but I love talking to women about this. If you are struggling with your fertility, I recommend checking out the Holistic Fertility Method. That is Dr. Catherine Zagoon's website. She's been a guest on the show before. It's been a long time, but she has helped so many people that I personally know and that have listened to her show on Food Heals Conceive naturally. And so she has methods that not most doctors are really talking about. And she's really on the cutting edge of getting pregnant naturally. And so she really delves into everything you can do with 
nutrition, with moving your body, with your emotional health, with your sexuality, with your detox, with massage, with advanced diagnostic testing like functional medicine so you can get to the root of what might be causing any infertility issues. So just throwing that out there for anyone listening who may be struggling and you want to get your hormones into balance, perhaps you're trying to conceive, that is a great resource. So I hope those were helpful. Michaela, thank you so much for sending in the question. And Food Heals Nation, you can always send me questions in the Food Heals Nation Facebook group or DM me on Instagram. All right, Food Heals Nation, that's our show. See you next time. Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.